Good day and welcome to the channel. In this short video, we are going to unbox, set up, and demonstrate, and then provide a full review of this Epson Fast Photo, which is the FF680W. W stands for wireless, by the way. It's an option. It gives you a bit of a clue. Now, there's a lot of choices and settings that you can set up with this uh, for optimizations and other things, uh, but the defaults, I think, are going to work just fine. So we're going to run through this and tell you what we think of it, as well as explaining all of the features. By the way, this is uh, not being paid for by Epson or anyone else. So what we're about to tell you is straight honest. Hey, if you find this video useful, please give us a big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Let's get to unboxing this guy. Okay, so one of the things you'll notice is that when we unboxed it, we kept this little odd piece of cardboard, and you might ask why we did that. Well, that's because there is a special cover sheet in here. If you have a photo that is sticky or old or delicate, you can put it in here. You put it face up, uh, down at this end, and then put it through. And this will keep the uh, picture protected. So we don't have any of those, so we're not going to worry about that, but we'll definitely keep it. This sheet, by the way, can be replaced directly from Epson. They say that it's good for about 500 scans. Now, you'll notice that we're working on a PC, but this also will work with a Mac, and it will also, this is pretty cool, work with your phone. So if you have an iPhone or a Samsung Galaxy or a, you know one of the normal Android phones, you will find that you can actually do the scanning right to your phone. Let's show you what the device actually looks like. So this is quite portable. So you can take this cover, hold it over, and yeah, that'll move around. It's a little heavy uh, to, to transport, but it's not, not ridiculous. On the back, there's the power, and there is USB 3, and um, super speed, and it also has a Kensington lock. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. There's nothing much on the bottom uh, and uh, or on the sides. However, there is this tray that pulls out, at the bottom, that's it, to catch your photos. And you can push this button right here and pop this open if there's a jam. So you can see what's inside, right? Just a usual scanner. Uh, one note, by the way, if you've got something large, say, or really thick, so something that's, say, mounted on cardboard, don't put it through here. If you do, it's gonna jam and you'll either damage the photo or the scanner, or more likely both. So you'll need to use a regular flatbed scanner if you have something that's mounted. Don't try to jam it through here. Universal power block. But I'm in North America, so I get the North American plug. If you were in Asia or other parts of the world, use a different connector, that's what you would get. Okay, so the natural thing to do is uh, power it up, plug it in with your the USB cable, uh, and then try to get it to work. Wrong. First thing you need to do, get the software. Second thing you need to do, power it up. As I said, this will work just fine with your iPhone or with your Android device, especially the uh, Samsung devices. You just get the app, set the both up on Wi-Fi and the same Wi-Fi and bingo bongo, you're good to go. All right, let's go get the software. So it's fastphoto.com slash get started. Type that right into your address bar at the top in your browser. And as mentioned, there's the app for iOS or for Android, but we want it for our operating system, which in this case is Windows. It takes a second to come up. And now which operating system do you want? Now take a look at this. Uh, I'm running Windows 11, so that's easy for me. But this is supporting all the way back to Windows Vista, Windows XP, Windows 7. That's old stuff. And on the Mac side, it's supporting all the way back to Mac OS 10.5. But get this, it even has Linux support. Amazing, I had no idea it would support that. Okay, so I will choose Windows 11, you will choose whatever's appropriate for you. Download, and while we're downloading, let's look at what else is here. I can just get the drivers if I want, I do not. There's also some utilities, and there's an admin tool for the network, but we probably don't care about that. I'm going to allow it to collect data because this is my test kit. Uh, most of you will want to uncheck that for privacy reasons, and you should be worried about privacy. Now, the hardest way to do this is to connect it via Wi-Fi. And because this is a demo, that's what we're going to do. You're probably just going to plug the darn thing in. Just click USB and be on your way. But let's do Wi-Fi for us. And next, and it will install. We'll connect using the WPS button, which is the Wi-Fi protected setup. Basically, on your access point, there, in other words, your, your Wi-Fi router, there's probably a little button that you probably never use. That will say I want to pair something with it. In this case, I want to pair the scanner. So let's do that. If you don't want to do that or this is just too confusing, 
just use the cable. Now power the unit up, the unit being the Epson FF680W. It is now up, next. And now I need to go to my router and press the WPS button. That's Wi-Fi protected setup, as I said. And that's just a quick setup button for wireless devices. We'll be right back. So I'll press the WPS button in our uh, Wi-Fi router in our office here. Let me click next. And now it says to press the link button. Don't press the Wi-Fi button, press the link button. So I'm going to press and hold the link button. And these should start going back and forth. And I'm supposed to press and hold, keep this held until this turns to a solid. There it is. Oh. <laughs> okay, let me do that again. Press and hold. There, okay, it's gone solid. Solid blue, so I think it's probably connected. Okay, let's click next. Bingo, it's set up on wireless. It's come up with a bunch of things and the scanner driver is the one thing you can't skip. Everything else is optional. Okay, so now it's asking us what we want to call our photos. Well, I want all of my photos prefixed with the word Matthews, but you will put in whatever you want. So it will prefix the word Matthews and then a number as it stands now. But as you scan, you'll be able to change that. So you could have a batch that's called Christmas 2017 or whatever else you wanted. Now we can go through all settings, but it, the wizard's going to take us through some of them. But let's go through all of them to show you them very quickly. So in here, there's the prefix for the name. And every time we do a batch of images, a batch of photos, it's going to prompt to say, do you want to change his name? Yes, we do. Uh, enhancements. So this is quality enhancements, things like contrast and color and brightness. And it's going to fix these sort of broken photos uh, because, you know, photos as they get old, they gray or they become yellow, whatever. This will clean them up. Uh, this will also get rid of red eye. It's kind of nice. Now, a fun part here is that this is going to, when you do a single scan, it's going to create two scans for you. One is the original. The second is the enhanced. Very shortly after you get the, set, the the way you want it, you're probably going to want to change this setting to directly to the scan photo. But for the moment, because this is a demonstration, we'll set it to, to a second uh, photo. Uh, and that way you can see what the original looked like and what the scan looks like. Okay, now st uh, scan settings, 300, 600, 1200. Why wouldn't you use the highest quality? Couple of reasons. Number one, uh, the size. Uh, the, these will be exponentially larger. So a 300 DPI, that's 300 dots per inch. In other words, one inch, there's 300 dots. That's a lot of dots. A normal screen capture, for instance, is 96 dots per inch. So 300's pretty good. 600's better. And 1200 is uh, not real. This is a 600 dots per inch scanner, a 600 DPI scanner, and it can, with some algorithms fake its way to 1200. So that's why it says interpolated. I wouldn't bother with that. We'll run some tests so you can see. The other reason to not run it at the high resolution is speed. This is going to run through very, very quickly. Uh, now, do we want the output to be JPEGs or TIFFs? Leave it as JPEG. And now this is really nice. This scans the front and the back because maybe grandma wrote on the back of the picture what it was. Now let's go to advanced settings. Uh, auto rotation. Let's say you have a portrait picture that you put in horizontally. You put it in landscape. Well, the system will recognize that it's a face probably and turn it upright for you. It's kind of nice. And a few other little bits and pieces. Upload. You can push things directly to Dropbox or Google Drive. You don't have to. I'm just going to push mine to my local computer. Scanner settings. There's a couple things in here, but nothing too dramatic. Let's go into device settings. And again, we're just going to leave the defaults. I'm showing this to you just so you know where they are and click continue. Now it's asking you some of the same questions we just talked about. So we're going to skip over these. Let's go scan something. All right, so here I have eight photos that are in a nice little batch. I'm going to put them in. The uh, face comes out and head down. Now let's see how fast these will scan through at the default 300 dots per inch. Now it's asking, where are these from? Uh, these are, I'm going to make this up. Now, 
I thought it was stuck there, but it was not. Okay, so that is about a little faster than one a second. And let's see what the quality looks like. So it adds the letter A to all of the images that have been adjusted. And yeah, all of them are just better. So I'm going to go into my settings enough with giving me two copies. Scan directly to the photo, there we go. Just give me the enhanced versions. So let's go into settings and change it to 600 dots per inch. Let's go scanning at 1200 now and see how slow that is and how large the file is. So there, I'll set it to 1200. Okay. Now it's scanning these at the same speed as the 600 because this is a 600 DPI scanner. So the, the uh, 1200 is all done in software. It's just going to slightly move it up as far as the quality goes. It says double, but I'll believe it when I see it. Let's find out. Here are five larger photos, and it won't make any difference how large the photos are physically uh, because the scanner is the same. It's, it's a bar that goes all the way across. It might take a little bit longer to process, but that's all. Let's go to start. Actually, I'm going to change this back to uh, 300 dots per inch. Click OK and click Start Scanning. Boy, this is really easy. Boy, that's fast, boys and girls. All right, so it's quality check time and comparison time, and then we're going to have our review wrap up. So, uh, this is the original, and you can see down here, this is 215 kilobytes, and it's a little off as far as the colors go. But then the 300 enhanced, much better, and it's only a little bit larger, 318 kilobytes. Then you get to the 600, and uh, look at that, 5 megabytes. So you're going from 0.3 kilobytes to 5, so this is about 15 times larger, quite a lot. Then the 1200 is 14 megabytes, so gigantic. Now let's look at the actual quality. And uh, so you can see here, we have them lined up in order. This is the original, and it's actually pretty much what the image looks like. It's, uh, you know, as if it was scanned. <laughs> but enhanced, it is just better. Let's look at the actual quality. So we will zoom in a bit. So I'm gonna click on the first one, which is the original. And let's zoom it in to the center. And you can see here, it's pretty good. The enhanced version, much better. Just clearer, just better. Let's go to the 600. Um, yeah, there's more detail there for sure. Let's toggle back and forth, right? You're able to zoom in further. And I think that the, the really fine details really are clearer. In fact, you can see here, I should have probably brushed off the photos because these are marks that are on the photo is not in the photo, but uh, the good on the scanner. Now let's go to the 1200. Yes, it's better, I'm sure, but I don't think for most people it makes the slightest difference. So I think I would leave this at the default of 300 dots per inch, and I would have it only scan and provide me with the enhanced version. I don't need the original. Uh, I might go to 600. It doesn't take a lot of extra time but it does, doesn't add a whole lot other than file size. So what do we think of this unit? Wow, we are impressed. Now, true, this is expensive. This is about $700 Canadian, so let's call it 500 US, not a cheap product. However, the plan is to use this for a couple of months, scan all of our photos and our neighbor's photos and our friend's photos, and then try to sell it. We're going to move it through the secondary market to try to recover some of that cost. As an alternate to this, you can use staples or other services that charge between $0.10 cents and about $0.75 cents per image. 
but you have to ship them off and it's risky, you know, if you're shipping them. I'm not comfortable doing that. We wanted to have them in-house. So, hey, if you found this video useful, please give us the big thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Super helps with the Google algorithms. As well, subscribes always appreciated. We do all kinds of these uh, odd product reviews and uh, how-tos. If you have any questions or concerns, you can always leave a question or comment below, or you can get a hold of us directly at www.urtech.ca. That's www.urtech.ca. Thanks, and have a great day. Bye-bye.